Hi, I'm James Williams. I'm Director of Public Health for Medway Council. I'm here today to talk to you about how we use data and information for planning and research purposes. So the first thing I'll talk about is what is the secondary use of data? Now it's a long word and it's definitely a long word for me, but it's basically how we analyse and use data and we integrate that from different organisations such as the NHS and local authority to give us a better understanding as to what's happening within a population. So that could be a, a you know, group of people living in a local area like a small town or a village or um, somewhere as big as um, the county of Kent uh, and Medway. So that's nearly two million people. We need to use this information and we use it to help us plan services, not just for now, but for the future. And of course, because our population changes over time, we can use our intelligence, so we use the data that we collect um, to determine what services might be required, whether that's hospital services or community services. Uh, hospital services, obviously, you know, that might be emergency department, how many doctors and nurses we might need for a particularly specialty, let's say, for, to manage people who might have heart problems, or community services, and they might be things like district nursing, health visiting services, those types of things. The way in which we bring together that information enables us to join up our planning and join that planning up so we meet the needs of local people and I do know that that's an important consideration that everyone should be concerned about. So all this work is taking place in a new form called the integrated care system, the integrated care system and we've got a integrated care system for Kent and Medway and that's basically the new structures that came into place on July the 1st 2022 that replaced things um, that would previously called clinical commissioning groups and the way in which local authorities and other partners now work in integrated care systems means we've got a better opportunity to join our information up so we can make the best services available for our population. So there are many examples that I could give you as to why it's important to have um, joined up data and information and bearing in mind that this information that we use does not identify people it's just basically anonymized data, so all of the information that might tell us who somebody is is stripped out and we can then just lump that all together to make a sense of how many people potentially have had a particular issue, how many people might require support then in the future uh, and that is really really helpful for us to, to really get on top of the challenges that we face. So there are many examples that I can give you, uh, whether that's in Kent and Medway or further afield. And for example, in Sussex, um, the use of data has been linked up to help reduce the impact on people with diabetes, for example, and um, them having to have uh, amputations. Unfortunately, because that can be a byproduct of people uh, with diabetes. Um, and I won't go into the detail of it, but suffice to say, it can be a complication. But by joining up the information and the data that they had across both health and social care, and um, people in Sussex were able to reduce the number of people that unfortunately may well have had to have had an amputation because their care and treatment were not as effective as it could well have been. And that was some of the um, excellent use of data and information. What I would say though, is that people are often concerned about how their information is stored, who's got access to it, what they then do with that access. And I will 100% say again that no information about people's personal identifiable stuff, so your date of birth, you know, your name, anything like that is shared. It's basically it's secured in a place that we call a safe haven. So that's a data and information system that is locked down. And people who access that information, uh, our analysts and our researchers, they're all carefully screened before giving any access at all. And when we produce the results of it, so when we look at that data and we produce it, that is all anonymized. So nobody knows who they are, uh, what they are, in that population other than we've got characteristics of the people whose details are being inputted but stripped out completely so you don't have any of identifiable information whatsoever. It is actually down to you whether you would want to opt in or opt out for the purposes of planning and research purposes and you can also go to uh, the NHS website and I'll give you the link now which is www.nhs.uk 
forward slash your NHS data matters. All right. So if you just do a Google for that and it gives you the ability to opt out and you can also learn about how we use data and information in Kent and Medway by going to www.nhs.kentandmedway.co.uk and you can get access to the information. Right. Let me just retract that. So you're going to have to cut this bit. So I'll do that again. So if you want to learn more about your data and what we do with it and how we're joining that information up across Kent and Medway, please get in touch with us and you can do that via our website, which is www.kmkernel.org. That's www.kmkernel.org. Thanks ever so much for supporting uh, this work. As we've said, um, this information is important for planning, 